What's up everybody and welcome back to DRZ Productions. For today's video, we're going to go over the Double Bell 1894 Winchester. Basically the most American rifle out there. This thing has been used throughout all of history. In terms of Western expansion, uh, it's probably your most famous cowboy lever gun out there. This has been used throughout the ages and throughout those ages it's been updated every single time. Um, this is kind of your standard cowboy type rifle. This is pretty famous uh, for all your westerns and all your western video games. So for Christmas, Airsoft Brookie, or my girlfriend Brooke, was kind enough to go out and get me this one-of-a-kind double bear, double bear? Wow. Bear. This one-of-a-kind Double Bell 1894 Winchester. So what's kind of unique about this airsoft gun is not like other repeaters out there, this one is shell ejecting, meaning that it actually uses shells similar to your airsoft revolvers to operate. You load the shells in through this door on the side, similar to an actual 1894 Winchester, and you simply load a shell and then you're ready to go. This operates with CO2. It actually uses two CO2 cartridges back to back, which go in the stock. I found that kind of interesting because when I first got this rifle, I was kind of confused as to how you put the CO2 in because there wasn't any instructions in the box as to how to operate this rifle. I had to figure it out, but you take two CO2 cartridges, you open up this butt stock. There's a kind of a, a screw plate on the back. Um, some people have trouble getting this off. I found that if you dremel out that buttstock plate, uh, you create a wider kind of um, well for a flathead screwdriver to get into that buttstock screw. You can then twist off that screw on the back and remove the buttstock plate. Removing the buttstock plate then gives you access to the CO2 compartment. And from there, you simply drop in two CO2 cartridges back to back inside the stock of this rifle and then you twist on that valve seal you twist on that cap of that co2 unit that those two shells sit in that co2 compartment from there your gun should be good to go it should have co2 and should be good just make sure you put that stock back on and make sure it's on there pretty tight and from there you're good to go with this gun so some things that are very unique about this gun first off it's full metal there's quite some weight to this gun. And second off, it actually has real wood furniture. For this, I found that to be very, very neat. It makes it all the more realistic when you have something with real wood furniture. It's just super cool. Some pros about this rifle. Out of the box, it shoots pretty hot. This thing shoots about 430 FPS with 0.3 gram BBs. So that's a little spicy. That's running up close to above two joules if you were to run this at your local field. Out of the box, this came with 10 shells. The shells that it came with were this copper color, and they're about the same size as a 3030 Winchester round. You simply take it and you load it in from the side. That round then goes into your feeding tube here, just like an actual Winchester. And then you pull down your lever, pull back up on your lever, and you've now chambered around. From this point, you make sure that your safety's off and you can go ahead and you shoot it like so. And then this is where the fun part is. When you go to pull your lever down to eject that round, that round then ejects out of that chamber, which is really cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I actually got out and played with this. It was very interesting to operate. It's something I've never really, I've never really had the experience to do something like this. What was very challenging for me was using a lever action against kids who were using semi-automatic. Obviously, they're at a way better advantage, but the nostalgia that I got from using this was just unreal. And to me, that was probably the best part about this gun. So this right here, I think is probably one of my favorite airsoft guns so far. The only downside to it, and as you guys can already guess, is if you do play with something like this, you're gonna wanna buy a lot of shells. The shells that this comes with, it only comes with 10, you're gonna lose these all over if you're playing on an airsoft field or outdoors, obviously, because they're gonna get lost in the grass and the ground. So for that reason, it's kind of more of a movie piece or a movie prop. If you're really into filming Westerns or any sort of cinematography, any sort of video or film, this will be your go-to. You really want it to look realistic and you want that shell to eject out of that shot. This thing is going to be your best friend. But as for playing on the field, it's very difficult because I was running around just about all day playing. Uh, every time I'd try to get a kill, I'd then be afterwards looking for the shells that I dropped all over the field. I probably lost about, I don't know, three or four of those shells. The nice thing is about this gun is the Double Bell Winchester 1884 actually uses smoke wagon rounds from the Elite Force smoke wagon. You can find these on places like evike.com. They are about uh, $10 for a pack of six. Now I know that sounds a little expensive. Hello, geese. 
Wow, those are loud. Now I know that sounds a little expensive, but for 50 bucks, you get about 30 shells. That'll last you a pretty decent amount. And you might lose a couple, but you'd still have probably 25 shells at the end of the day that you can use. So for Western games, this would be a lot of fun. Some things that people I've heard around don't like about it though. The, uh, the door on the side to load your rounds gets scratched up really easy out of the box. Um, if you can see, and I'll zoom in on this and some other footage, the door on this gun gets scratched up really easy. As soon as I put the first round in out of the box, it began to scratch up on the side of that door. It doesn't change the way it operates, it just changes the way it looks. But, you know, real guns are meant to be beat up and used, so if you were to treat it kind of like a real gun if you were an actual cowboy, your rifle probably wouldn't be as clean as, uh, as it looks out of a brand new box. So I just kind of go, eh, it's kind of battle damage. But this door still operates fine, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so far the action itself operates fine, I have not had any issues with that. And again, I've only played with it for one day, but the one thing I will say that a lot of people out of the box do complain about is the stock. Getting this buttstock plate off to access your CO2 chamber is a pain in the butt. And I, re I actually did have to Dremel the back of the stock to create a wider well for that flathead screwdriver so I could get the stock off. So it's not gonna be a run and gun out of the box, unfortunately. You are gonna have to put some work into it to really get it up to that point. Um, but with basic tools, you can do that. Me personally, it's probably gonna end up as a beautiful wall piece next to my other Western collections that I have at home because I'm a huge Western fan, as you can tell. And I'd like to get out to more Western games this year. That's the intent, but we'll see if we can get out there and do that. So yeah, for today's video, I'll bring you guys the 1894 Winchester and now we can switch over to some gameplay footage and I'll let you guys enjoy that and feel free to comment down below your thoughts of this gun and let me know if there's anything I left out or that you'd like to know about this gun and I can get back to you with more information about anything you need to find out with this. As always this is Nate from DRZ Productions. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out everybody and stay safe out there. Limo Driscoll's got our gold boys and we gotta get it back. Who's with me, boys? Yeah, yeah, Give me a yeehaw! 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 Let's go get our gold! Yeehaw! Fuck it, I'm gonna fuck the hogs. <laughs> Hey, I do. Oh, 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 Damn idiots all over the place. Lenny! Where are you, Lenny? This reminds me of that time when we hit on the boat and we were escaping black water because Dutch messed up. Oh, that just went flying up there. Biggest yeehaw, everybody. Yeehaw! There we go. 
Now, out of all the games I've played, I, this was probably the most fun I've had in a long time playing out at River City Airsoft. It's the first time I really got to do kind of a costume play, and I got out and played as someone different. You know, not your average NATO, Special Forces, whatever you want to call it, 75th Ranger kit. Um, this is completely throwback to the Wild West, and I really enjoyed it. It was uh, something just wildly unique, and I really enjoyed playing as probably one of my favorite characters in a video game. And uh, I really started feeling the part of that character. <coughs> It was uh, it was quite a interesting experience. It was it, it was something I really really enjoyed. <laughs> I love the 1880s. I love cowboys and I love westerns. They're probably some of my favorite movies out there and probably my favorite time in history. Personally, I think the 1880s was the peak time in American history. <laughs> you had everything. You and your boys, you could go out. And all you had to do was just rob a bank and you'd be rich. All you had to do was just buy one of these bad boys and no one could tell you otherwise. You can live anywhere. You could just wander the country, you and your horse. That's all you needed. No one cared about going green because you had your horse. Your horse was the greenest thing out there. As long as you kept your horse alive, you could get anywhere you wanted. As Brooke quoted in the 1880s, it was such a great time, you could in fact pay someone to give you a bath. Not sure how true that is, but according to Brooke, it's true. Baths you could pay for in the 1880s. Get a nice scrubbing down and you go, yeah, all right. Beautiful bath. <laughs> you can rob trains and get away with it. Think about that. Imagine being able to just, you and your boys are like, yeah, you know what? Let's rob a train today, right? That sounds like fun. Let's go rob a train. So let's get in a horse. Let's all squat up. Let's get our lever actions that we bought for about $3 from our local gun store. Cause that's probably what it cost back then. And you and your boys could go out and you could just rob a train. I don't encourage it today, but back then, you could do with it. And you'd end up as a sexy outlaw. You'd get your face on that Wanda poster everywhere you go in the 1880s and the 1890s. Women walk by and they go, damn, look at that sexy ass cowboy on that Wanda poster. And you were the popular guy at that time. That's all you had to do, just had to rob something. Yes, it truly was the most notorious time to be alive. <coughs> it's great, it's real great. I wish I was born in that time period.